Hey everyone, uh, it's Dave Kirchel, uh, writer of You Alberta Bot, and today I'm just making a quick video to show you how easy it should be to set up and use the bot from scratch. So here is the GitHub page for You Alberta Bot, and if you just head over to the wiki, you can see the instructions. So let's go to the installation instructions first. So the three main things you need to use You Alberta Bot. Um, Visual Studio 2013, which is here, which I already have installed because that would take forever to download and install. Um, BWAPI 4.1.2 and BWTA 2.2. So I already have uh, BWAPI 4.1.2 and BWTA downloaded, so let's just set those up. Okay. So this is the Blappy installer, it's pretty easy to use. Um, what we're going to do is install it to somewhere a little more convenient. So I'm going to install it to D libraries Blappy 412. When you're installing this, um, you should have no spaces in your file name. There's something with Visual Studio that's really weird where if you have environment variables with spaces in them then Visual Studio kind of screws up. So make sure when you're installing this uh, that there's no spaces in the file name. So I'll install it there. Just click full installation and then install. So you can see that this appear in my D libraries folder. So we'll just go in here to see what it installed. Just takes a second to finish. Uh, it asks you to run stuff on startup. Let's forget that for now. So uh, BW API comes with a bunch of stuff. The main things you'll be interested in if you're just using your Alberta bot um, are the include and lib folders. That's where all the different libraries are and header files and also the chaos launcher folder. So this is where you'll launch chaos launcher from. So that's pretty much it for BW API. It's really simple to install. So now the BWTA installation um, just requires a few clicks. So I just downloaded the 2.2 version here. So we can just use WinRAR to extract that. So we'll just go extract here. And then it puts it in its own folder. So again, we have the headers and the libraries to include. And we also have this one extra step which um, are these DLL files which are required to run. So you just take these files and copy them into your Windows directory. Um, I've already done that, so I'm not going to do it right here. But just make sure they go into C Windows, not System32 or anything like that. Okay, so BW API and BWTA are installed. Pretty simple. So now we'll go back here. So to actually download the source code, for you Alberta bot on Windows, you can use the uh, really nice GitHub uh, Windows client. So once you install the GitHub Windows client, you can just click this clone and desktop button here. So when you do this, it'll ask you where you want to install or where you want to download. So I'm just going to click the D drive. And then this will clone the whole repository. So that's downloading the whole GitHub of you Alberta bot. And now you can like see all the history of the commits and everything. And uh, it's really nice. I recommend this if you're using Windows. So I put you Alberta bot in the D drive. So here's all the code from the GitHub. And now to actually compile the bot, we just open up Visual Studio and you should see the solution file here. So let's just open up that. And that's going to open up in Visual Studio 2013. So here we have the three projects which are included in UAlbertaBot. There's the build order search system, uh, Sparkraft, and UAlbertaBot itself. Uh, you don't have to worry about these two libraries unless you're doing some sort of advanced stuff. So to compile the bot, let's just go up to release select release mode. So there's two modes, release and debug. 
release is the one you usually want to compile to, so it's faster, you'll want to use this mode for the competition. The debug mode, uh, it's debug, so it's going to be a lot slower when it's running, but it'll allow you to actually step through the code and see what's going on, and I'll show you how to debug things later. But for now, um, let's just set it to release mode. So, Visual Studio, um, I'll show you the project file here. So the UAlberta project file, the linker input settings, this is where it points to BWTA and BWAPI. But right here you can see that we actually have these defined with environment variables. And this is so you don't have to manually edit the project file if you go to a new computer. So what you do need to do first is set up these two environment variables. So the uh, BWAPI directory and the BWTA directory. So it's pretty easy to do that. Just go back to Windows Explorer. So this is Windows 10. So here it's called this PC, but on Windows 7 and Windows 8 it's called My Computer. So you just right click there and click Properties. Then you go Advanced System Settings, Environment Variables, and here you go. So there's two options here. There's one to set the environment variables for just your current user, or system variables which will be enabled for every user. I just do the system variables because it's a bit easier in case you switch. Um, so here you can see I have, I'll edit this. So this is my BW API directory. So this is the directory I was using before, so I'll just change it to what I just installed, which is DE libraries. And then the BWTA directory, and I'll change this so I go back to where I installed that. D libraries, and this is the folder name for BWTA. So I can just copy this. and put it in there. So now this will point these two environment variables to those directories. Okay. Now whenever you set an environment variable in Windows, you actually have to restart um, Visual Studio for it to read it. So let's go ahead and restart that. So we'll go back to UAlbertaBot and open up the project. Okay. So now it read in the, the environment variables and we should be able to compile this. So you can just right click on UAlbertaBot and click build. So in the solution, UAlbertaBot project depends on these other two projects, so you don't need to build them first. It will automatically build the other two projects and link them. So the intermediate build files go in this release folder here. So you can see all the object files here. Okay, so it just finished the build order search system project and the Sparkraft project and created the libraries for those. And now it's compiling the Alberta bot. Okay, so it output the DLL file into the bin folder here. So you can see in the ualbertabot bin folder we have ualbertabot.dll and that's what we'll use to actually run the game. So what we do to run the game is we go back to our BW API installation directory. So that's D libraries BW API chaos launcher. So now we double click Chaos Launcher and we have some options here. So we're interested in running the release mode of BWAPI, so we click here. And before we run anything, we actually need to tell it to load the DLL that we just compiled. So we click the config button and here we go. So by default, this points um, 
to the example AI module, but we're going to point it to where we just compiled UAlbertaBot. So let's go back to D, UAlbertaBot. Um, bin directory, copy that. Bin slash ualbertabot.dll. Okay, and we can ignore the rest of the settings for now. And then select StarCraft 1.61 and click start. So now we're at the menu. We'll load our profile, go to custom game, and load one of the AI IDE tournament maps. Oh, I forgot to select Protoss as the race. Let me go back. Um, and mission, good mission. So here, make sure you set Protoss as your race. Um, I just got lucky. If you select random, it might crash. So whatever strategy you're using in UAlbertaBot, make sure you set the race here. And the game mode has to be set to melee. And now you can see UAlbertaBot running. Uh, by default, we have some of the debug information printing. So you can see unit health bars. You can see the build order info. Um, so now we're going to build another probe and a pylon. But this is pretty slow. So what we can do to speed this up, let's just exit the program, is we can edit the configuration file. So if we go back here to the UAlbertaBot directory, we can see the UAlbertaBot config file. A um, bunch of different options in here, but for now we're just concerned with the speed. So let's turn up the bot speed a bit. Uh, this is the BW API option to set the local speed. So now, if we run the bot again, it should be much faster. Yeah. So you can see that the bot is running way faster. So this is the mode you want to use. Or this is the speed you want to use if you're running a bunch of games. Okay, so that was the game. But as you can see, you're going to be starting these games pretty often, and it's going to get really annoying to uh, manually start each game like that. So we can actually set up the auto menu to do that for us. So let's go back uh, to the configuration file here, and now we can turn auto menu to single player. And what that'll do is it'll automatically select the single player. We can put auto restart to on, and what this will do is when the game ends, it will automatically um, automatically restart the game with your settings and keep playing. Here, uh, we've got a bunch of maps from the AI IDE competition already installed. So I'm just going to say, use the maps from that directory. Now we set our race to Protoss, and we'll set the enemy race to random. And keep the enemy count on one. UAlbertaBot is programmed to be um, just a one versus one bot, so if you put multiple enemies in, who knows what could happen. It'll probably crash somehow. So, this will go by really quick, but the auto menu selects all those options for you. So, let's just launch it and it should go straight into the game. So that's way better than editing all the settings manually every time. Okay, and now it'll auto restart, select a different map and a different um, enemy race and play that out. So the in-game bots are no problem for us, so let's just stop that here. Um, so let's go over some of the other configuration options in the bot. So there's a bunch of different categories. The first one is bot info, which is just, you know, you can name your bot and give it the authors and the race. And then you can say whether or not you want to send this information to the other player, like you can print out hello or whatever. Um, just as a note, setting the race here, you still have to set it in the game and in the BW API configurations. This is just um, for your own bookkeeping here. 
Next we have the BW API settings. So the set local speed is an integer which represents the minimum amount of time that each frame has to take. So for example, if you set it to 100, then each frame of game animation will take at least 100 milliseconds. So the lower this number is, the faster the game will go. And zero is the, the, the lowest number. Set frame skip actually disables the game's engine from drawing frames. So if it's set to zero, it will draw every frame of the game. But if we set it really high, the game actually won't animate for a bunch of frames. And this actually makes the game even faster than it was. So I'll show you a game at that speed. So this is this means that it will only draw every 256th frame of the game. So you can see it skipping around, and as long as your bot doesn't take a long time, then this makes the game really, really fast. So if you're doing like some statistics collection, or you're trying to see how well your bot does against a built-in AI, I recommend setting that really high. So you can see how quickly that plays games. Um, but for debugging, I, I recommend you put this at zero. So, I, for, so for the set local speed variable, the game runs at 24 frames per second, which is approximately 42 milliseconds per frame. So if you put this at 42, you'll actually get the regular speed of the game. So this is what player speed goes at, and after playing with the computer for a while, it does seem really, really slow. Okay, so we'll put it at 10 for now. Uh, also, you can say whether or not the bot enables these cheat flags. So enable user input. This lets you actually click and issue units orders. Uh, if you turn that off, then you can't um, actually tell units to go move around in the game. So this is nice for debugging to have it on. Enable complete map information is like a cheat. So if I change this to true um, and then start the game, Okay, well, there's a bug. I'll have to fix that. So if you enable that to true, um, it'll actually let you see the entire map. Micro. So these options um, use Sparcraft simulation. So the bot actually uses our Sparcraft package, which is a combat simulator, to say whether or not the bot should attack or retreat. And what it does is it calculates if your units can beat the enemy's units. If your units, if it thinks your units can beat the enemy units, it will keep attacking. If it thinks your units can't, then it'll it'll hold back. If you set this to false, it won't use that system and it'll just keep attacking. So I recommend, unless you're doing something else pretty clever, that you keep that there. The worker defense options. Um, if this is true, then the game, the bot's logic says, if we don't have any attacking units in our base and they're attacking us, attack their units with our workers. So if you set that to false, that won't happen. Um, these combat radius stuff, this is, I recommend leaving that alone. That's for the combat simulator. It says, like, how close do I have to be to other units to consider them in combat and stuff. The macro options, so this is for building your base. So by default, every building that you build will have one tile position of padding around it. Um, and you can change that to be more if you want. So increasing this to like three makes your base like super spread out. But I don't recommend doing that. I recommend keeping this at one. But piling spa pylon spacing, um, oops, there's a typo, uh, is important because you want to build buildings around your pylons. And that psi that it generates to power other buildings, you need to make sure that you're pylons are separate. So make sure this is high, but not too high. About three is good. Um, so now there's a bunch of debug options. So whenever you encounter an error in the game, um, UAlbertaBot has this assertion system. So here's the assert code, and I'll just show you an example. Okay, so if you want to assert, let me make this bigger, if you want to assert something in the game, um, you call this UAB assert or UAB assert warning. Uh, UAB assert will actually fire a debug break. UAB assert warning will just print it to the screen. 
So for example, when we're logging, uh, reading in the, sorry, when we're reading in the settings file, the configuration file, uh, we say strategy must have a race. So this is just how the assert system works. Um, and asserts are also logged to the error file. And so wherever you specify this, all the assert messages will also go there. So if it goes by too fast in the game, you don't have to worry about it. It'll show up in the log file. And down here we have a ton of options for debugging output. So right now we have draw unit health bars and draw production info set to true. So I'll just go back and run that again. So draw unit health bars are these health bars up here. So unlike StarCraft 2, in StarCraft 1, normally um, the health bars aren't drawn unless you have the unit selected. And so I just wrote this thing to draw health bars on top of every unit all the time. And the production info is actually this build order stuff over here. So we can say that we have one gateway that's currently constructing. This is the amount of time it has left. And we have, this is our build order that we hope to do in the future. And so as these keep getting built, uh, they get removed from the build order. Okay, so... Uh, there's a bunch of other options and you can play around with these, but just for example, draw enemy unit info. So uh, UAlbertaBot keeps track of what it thinks the enemy has. So if we go back and start the game, oh, this actually did work. So enable complete map information um, actually does let the bot see the whole map, but it doesn't open up the whole map to your vision. I forgot about that. So it actually did work. It wasn't a bug. So I'll set this back to false. And then I'll set the speed uh, to zero again, just so I can get in the enemy base quicker. So over here, we're drawing all the things we know about the enemy units. And you can see that at the beginning of the game we didn't know anything about them, but we keep track of all the units that we have seen. And we can say, okay, the enemy has 13 larva. Um, I'll do that once more, and I'll pause the game. Okay, so here we can see um, we saw nine SCVs that the enemy had, and a command center, a supply depot, and the barracks. So you can get all this information from within your Alberta bot, and it'll draw it here. It'll also show when units die, how much uh, resources you've lost in terms of minerals and gas. So you can turn that on as well. And then there's a bunch of other things. Um, for example, worker info. Let's turn this back off. So the game, the, the bot has a internal worker manager that shows all the where all the workers are and this just keeps track of the status. So M is a mineral worker, uh, S is a scout worker, and then there's building workers, etc, etc. And if we turn on the associated resource info, we can see all the worker commands, what bases they're associated with, and what resources they're currently gathering. Okay. So you can play around with these debug, this debug stuff, and I'm sure it'll be useful uh, if you're actually trying to debug your own code. Let's just turn it back to the default for now. Also, you can turn um, all the debug settings off, and then nothing will draw to the screen. Okay. Down here uh, is the modules uh, section. I would leave this section alone uh, for now because, so you all about has a bunch of modules. It has a game commander which handles everything about the game. So if you set this to false, you all about basically will do nothing. It has a scout manager. So if you set this to false, the probe won't scout. Combat commander. If you set this to false, then the bot won't attack. Build order search. If you set this to false, then the build order search system won't work. So just leave these on for now. The only one I might toggle is the auto observer. So if you noticed, um, when the game is being played, the camera moves around by itself. So this is something I created just so you don't have to manually pan around the game. So it looks for things like 
units that are being attacked, units that are being created, units that are harvesting, and so you can see here it's following the scout worker. Um, but if you turn that off, because when that's on, you can't manually control the camera, which might be really uh, annoying if you're trying to debug stuff. So let's just turn that off, and then you can see when you play the game that the camera doesn't move at all, and you can manually hand the camera around by yourself. So if you're just watching your bot play, I suggest using the auto observer, but if not, then just turn that off. The strategy I.O. is also interesting. So if we go to the StarCraft folder, let me just do that real quick. Okay, so the StarCraft folder, inside the BWAPI data folder, uh, we have these read and write directories. So when you turn the strategy I.O. on, it will write out different results against different bots. And the way that the, the file format is, is it says, this is our current strategy name, this is our wins, and this is our losses. And the file is named with the opponent name. And the built-in AI have these weird names like Fenris Brood and something. Um, so it will read in that at the start of the game, and then if you want to, you can make some strategy decision based on that, and then it will write it out at the end of the game. So down here, um, the, the strategy I.O., where it reads and writes from is determined by these folders. So if you wanted to read and write from the same directory, you can. So this means at the beginning of the game, read in the file name from the right directory, and then after you're done, write it back to the right directory. So if you're playing against the built-in AI, um, I recommend this structure. But if you're actually running your bot in the tournament manager, then you have to read from the read directory and write for the right directory. OK, so the last and more impor most important option is the strategy options. So here you can define a bunch of different strategies. So each strategy has a name, a race, and an opening build order. So for example, right now our current strategy is set to Protoss Zealot Rush, but we could set that to any of the things we have listed here. Just make sure that the strings are exact. So we could set it to Dragoon Rush, and then when we start the game, the build order will actually be the Dragoon build order instead of the um, Zealot build order that we had before. So you see here the build order has the assimilator and the cybernetic score, etc. So, um, how does this work? Well, like I said, each strategy has a race and a build order. So when you set the strategy, it will start the game with this opening build order. Uh, now this can be empty if you want, but I recommend putting something in because the beginning of the game is super, super interesting. Um, but of course, a strategy isn't just um, a build order. So I'll go into the bot here, into the config section. So the strategy name gets put into here, into the um, config strategy strategy name namespace. So what you can do is, based on the current strategy in your bot, you can read this string and then make your logic decisions based on that. So if I just go into the strategy manager, for example, um, for later on in the game, when I want to get my build order goal uh, for the build order planner, here I actually just do an if else based on the strategy name. So if I if my current strategy is a zealot rush, then get the zealot rush build order goal. And let me see if I can find what that does. So the zealot rush build order goal just basically says, OK, um, get me a bunch more zealots. And then it returns that to the build order search manager, and it plans a new build order, etc., etc. So if you have a different strategy, you're going to have to create your own uh, build order goal function and then edit the get build order goal function based on your current strategy. Also, you could do things in the micromanager, which says, hey, if I'm doing a Dark Templar rush, then maybe I don't want to use the um, combat simulator. Maybe I just want to go all in with my Dark Templars. So that's pretty easy. Um, so yeah, you can turn UAlberta bot into like any type of bot you want really, really quickly using this config file. 
So that's the config file explained. So now I'm going to show you how to debug using the bot because debugging uh, BWAP bot, BWAPI bots can be really, really difficult. So I'll show you how to do that now. So the first thing we're going oh, forgot to mention this. The first thing you should do when you compile, uh, make sure that this, uh, the modules on start function, which parses the settings file, is actually reading your config file. So change this directory name to, um, to what you have, or to where you downloaded all this stuff from. If you're going to compete in the tournament, this should actually be changed to a relative path name. So let's go back to the StarCraft folder. So this is my StarCraft folder. And when you have BWAPI installed, there should be this BWAPI data folder, which is relative to the StarCraft folder. Okay. Inside the AI folder during the tournament is where your UAlberta bot uh, DLL is going to go. So I'll just show you how that works. So let's go back to the D drive, to UAlbertaBot, and grab our DLL file. Okay. Inside the StarCraft folder, BWAPI, AI, so I'll just drop, drop it into here. So now that I've moved that file, I actually need to change the config file to point to where that is. So this here, the AI, this is relative to the StarCraft root directory. And since I had it in StarCraft BWAPI, then I can just say BWAPI dash AI WAPI oh, WAPI data, sorry, slash AI slash ualbertabot.dl. And when I run this, now that should still work the same. Right. So that read it from the Wappy data directory. And I'll just change that back uh, to what I had before. So yeah, this here, relative path names are always relative to the StarCraft root directory. Okay, now I'll exit here. Now, if we want to debug, first step is you're going to go into Visual Studio and you're going to select debug from the debug menu and then build uh, UAlberta bot using debug. And this is going to take a little while. So we'll go back to the UAlberta bot folder. takes a while to compile in debug mode because when you're in debug mode you can't use uh, parallel um, the MP flag for multiple processor compilation so it does take a while. Okay so this is done now and then here you can see that it put ualbertabot underscore d for debug into the bin folder where our original one went. So to launch the game in debug mode, we are going to unselect release mode and select debug mode. Now we'll open up the config again. Now the debug DLL is pointed to by this AI debug. So we'll copy in this and underscore D. Now we're going to turn on the pause debug option. What this does is you know how when we started the auto menu. So auto menu went into the game right away. And this is really bad if you're trying to attach the debugger to a process because you can't get there in time. So what this does is it actually pauses StarCraft in the menu. Excuse me. It pauses StarCraft in the game menu until the debugger is attached. So we turn this on and then everything else should be the same. 
Okay. And then we start in debug mode. Okay. And you see it's paused here in the debug menu. Uh, this is because of that pause debug option. So it'll stay there until we actually attach the debugger in Visual Studio to the process. So here we're going to go to the debug menu and click attach to process. And now all of our running processes will show up here. So StarCraft.exe should actually be shown here, but it's not. And the reason is that Chaos Launcher is run as administrator. And so this by default is only showing you the processes that you have running as your user. So we'll click show all processes from all user. And then we'll scroll down again. And now StarCraft shows up. So when we try to click attach here, it's actually going to tell us that we need to restart Visual Studio as the administrator. So we'll do that. Yes. Okay. So now we're back in Visual Studio as administrator. Click attach to process again. And now we should see StarCraft right here. Click attach. Okay. Now the first time you do this, it's going to take a second because it actually has to load some debug symbols. And you saw that that took maybe 10 seconds. And that's because um, when StarCraft is running in debug mode and you're using BWTA, it actually does take a couple of seconds for BWTA to process everything. So once it starts, uh, you can see the game running here. I'm actually going to go in to the modules on frame. So here we can actually set a breakpoint in real time. Okay. And so now we're debugging. So for example, we have the stack frame up here, we can see. So we're in UAlbertaBot on frame. Um, let's get out of there. And we'll go, oh, actually. So I'll step through here. And now I'll go into the Game Commander's update frame. So I'll step into. And now we're in Game Commander's update. And here is the information manager. So I can step into this one. So when I'm stepped in so far, I can actually see uh, my stack trace up here. And that's really useful for debugging. So this is actually how you do the debugging um, in StarCraft. So then I can click continue again. It'll bring me back to my breakpoint. So I can unset my breakpoint and then continue. And now since I have no breakpoint set, it'll be back into StarCraft. So when you do this, make sure that the debug DLL that was loaded has the exact same source code um, as what you have here. So for example, if I edit my source code, and I just say something like uh, int a equals 5, and then I try and set a, a breakpoint, it'll give me a warning. It'll say, this breakpoint can never be hit because the source code is different from what I had. So I'll undo that. Um, Your warriors have engaged and now I can set breakpoints again. So I'll just do the stop debugging here. This unattaches the process from StarCraft and then shuts down. So that's pretty much it. Um, it wasn't too hard to set up. I think basically anyone should be able to set up and get you Alberta Bot running. And it's really easy to modify if you go to the website. Uh, to the wiki, it will show you, for example, hey, how do I modify the build orders? So you can come here um, and see where in the code to modify the build orders, to do different build order goals and planning, if you want to modify how the combat logic works. It's all explained here in the wiki, so I suggest you go here. And that's it. Thanks for watching.